Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Compassionate Life Church. Right, let's try that one more time. Good morning, Compassionate Life Church. Good morning, good morning. This is a day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Who's excited about today? I mean, who's really excited about today? Today is a super special day. Today is the high holy day because today we remember, we celebrate the resurrection of our Savior. Okay, that, I thought that was going to get some people excited there. Today we remember, we celebrate the resurrection of our Savior. You know, the one who died on Friday. Everything was, looked bad on Friday. It looked like death was victorious on Friday. It looked like there was no hope on Friday. It was pain and despair on Friday. Then Saturday, it was quiet. Saturday there was nothing and then the Bible tells us that it was early Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands now if that's not a reason to celebrate if that's not a reason to give God praise this morning if that's not a reason to lift up your voice this morning, if that's not a reason to stand on your feet and welcome the presence of God into this place this morning, I don't know what it is. I can't push you or pump you or prime you no more than that because today we celebrate the fact that Jesus got up. Is there anybody in the house excited about the fact that Jesus got up? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome to Compassionate Life Church. Do me a quick favor. I know we are in this middle, so it should not be hard. Look at somebody in your vicinity. Look at somebody in your area. Look them dead in the eye. Look them dead in the eye and say, good morning. I'm so glad you're here. I love you. Now let's worship the Lord together. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Join me as, as a community. We welcome the presence of God in this space. It's important that we do this because without welcoming the presence of God, asking for the presence of God, having the presence of God, which is people gathered in a room, we need the Lord to be in this space so we can have an experience with God. God, we thank you. God, we honor you. God, we magnify you. You're so big and so vast. You're amazing. You're simply amazing, God. And, and we want to pause to just recognize you for who you are. Not for what you've done. Not for the blessings. But God, we simply want to pause to recognize who you are. That you are the creator and sustainer of all things. That you breathe life into us. That you spoke and it happened. God, you're so gracious to us. So kind to us. So merciful even when we don't deserve it. So, God, as a community, we want to say thank you. Now, God, we ask that your presence would commune with us this morning. God, we don't simply want to just have church today. We want to experience you on a whole new level. We want to see you on a whole new level. To feel you on a whole new level. We pray that you join us. You said where two or three are gathered, you are in the midst. God, we pray now for the minstrels, God. We pray for our pastors, God. 
as we prepare to move into worship. God, we pray that you be pleased. That's the ultimate goal is that you would be pleased. Souls will be saved and lives will be changed. That's our prayer today, God. God, we lift up every family represented in this place. We may not know the individual issues, God, but you do. So God, we pray that you meet us at the point of our needs. Where strength is needed, God, we pray for strength. Where joy is needed, God, we pray for joy. Where peace is needed, God, we pray for peace. Where provision is needed, God, we pray for provision. We lift up this world, this country, all the madness, all the craziness that's happened, God, but we still know that you are in control. And you showed us, even with the life of Jesus, that even though things may look bad, that you still can turn them around for our good. God, we love you. God, we honor you. God, we praise you. And it's in the precious and powerful and matchless name of your son, our Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ, and the people of God said, amen. If you're excited about the Lord, why don't you give God your best praise? Welcome to Compassionate Life Church. Hallelujah. Come on, don't stop praising him. Don't stop praising him. We came to celebrate our risen Savior. We came to give him what he's due. Hallelujah. It says an empty grave is there to prove our Savior. He lives. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to be in the house of God one more time. I'm excited to know that we serve a champion. I'm excited to know that we serve one who remains undefeated. He remains undefeated. He remains undefeated. And because he had, because he won, because he has victory, we have victory. Hallelujah. I came to bless him today. Hallelujah. This song is simple. It says, hallelujah, you have won the victory. And that's enough to shout me right there. But it doesn't stop. It says, death could not hold you down. Hallelujah. Death couldn't hold him down. Hallelujah. We came to bless our risen Savior today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. to know you but I'm excited about that today for you are the risen king you're seated in majesty oh you are the risen king says good night
you but I'm glad about God today I'm glad that we serve a king we serve a king that remains undefeated he's a winner he's a winner he defeated death hell and the grave hallelujah he's the risen king he's the risen king death could not hold you down they thought it was over death could not hold you down it looked real dark but I'm glad to know Death could not hold you down. <laughs> Death could not hold you down. And because it couldn't, I've got joy because he's alive. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to know that today. That death couldn't hold him. Nothing could stop him. They thought it was the end, but death could not hold him down. Hallelujah. And it says, Seated in majesty, seated in majesty, he is a risen king. Hallelujah. Come on, let's continue to worship him today. Hallelujah. God, you're awesome. God, you're amazing. Come on and say something to our God, to our risen Savior. Hallelujah. God, you are amazing. You are amazing, God. Hallelujah, you're a way maker. You're a promise keeper. You're my light in darkness. You're my safety. You're my protector. Hallelujah, let me tell you something. On my way here, the enemy was trying to stop me, but I'm so glad that there's a God who has angels encamped around me. I was so frustrated. My car is a little messed up. Pieces. But I'm glad to know that it could have been another way. I'm, I know it could have been different, but I'm glad that God brought me here. He's a risen king. He's a savior. He's a protector. He's a healer. He's a mender of the heart. Hallelujah. He's a mind regulator. I could have lost my mind. <laughs> I could have lost my mind, but I'm glad to know that he is a risen king. He's the protector of my mind. Listen, his word says he'll keep you in perfect peace. And I'm a testimony that he will do it. He has done it. He is doing it. Hallelujah. I'm so glad about God today. Hallelujah. I'm glad to be here with you all. But I'm glad more than to see the people to worship our God. Amen. Hallelujah. This next song, I just want to lift up. Just, Lord, I love you more than anything. That's my heart's cry each and every day. That, God, I love you more, 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 more than anything, God. Hallelujah. I want you to just lift your hands and go to go into worship even more with me right now as we lift this up before God today. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
bless your cry. I dare you to sing with me right now. I love you, Jesus. Resurrection Sunday, but if you just think about what we celebrate every year, oh, it's Easter, it's Resurrection Sunday, but we never think about what it took for us to get to Resurrection Sunday every year. It's easy now, and I think of how much he loved us, I'm going to be transparent. Pastor has said we've had a hard year. I had 
to be honest and say, God, do you still love me? It's been a hard year. Our parents are here. This is faith and finance. I'm a mathematician, and sometimes things did not add up. But then I had to realize, from last resurrection to this resurrection, the things that God has done for us. And it's not just another day. We should not treat Resurrection Sunday just as any other day. The truth of the matter is, had he not died, had he not died, we would be dead. Had he not died, none of us would exist. None of us deserve to be here. None of us deserve to be breathing the air that we're breathing. None of us deserve the blessings that we have, but because he died. But he didn't just die. Because he got up. That should be a sign that we can all get up. So every day, when you're feeling down, when you feel like the Lord has forgotten about you, remember you got up. And because he got up, we can get up. And because we are made and crafted in his image, we have all power in our hands because he gave it to us. That alone we have to think about every day because that is what he requires of us. He's not asking us to give him honor, glory, and praise. That's why we were created. He didn't go through all that for us just to be cavalier every Sunday. He did that so that we could give him all the glory, the honor, and the praise. And not just that, so that we can be a living example to others. Our job is to share our testimony. Our job is to share our trials and tribulations so that they can see how God has brought us out. Don't let all his dying and his raising, being raised from the dead go in vain. We have to take it into our hearts and into our spirits so that we are living testimonies for the goodness and the glory of God. So when you think about Easter Sunday, when you think about Resurrection Sunday, think about what Jesus went through. Better yet, think about the crosses you had to bear. Think about the burdens that you've carried and think about how you're still here standing strong. How you have the crosses of your burdens, your family's burdens, your children's burdens, everything that you carry, but you got up. And it's only because he rose that we're able to rise. Can we give God praise for the resurrection? Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It is good to see y'all this Resurrection Sunday. I am so excited to be here and to see each and every one of you here worshiping with us today. Welcome to those who worshiping with us in our virtual sanctuary online. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you haven't done so already, please make sure you like, love, and share the broadcast. This message today is going to bless somebody. Amen. I feel it in my spirit. Pastor Miller is going to bring a word that is going to inspire somebody to get you through the next Resurrection Sunday. Amen? Amen. Amen. At this time, we are going to go to our scripture reading. Amen? You know what? Before we do that, it's Resurrection Sunday. We need to meet and greet everybody. Amen? Last Resurrection Sunday, we couldn't do that. Let's be thankful. So at this time, we're going to take a few minutes and get out of your seats and greet and hug and love on each other in the name of Christ. Amen? Amen.
scripture reading. You will stand for our scripture reading. It will be found in Romans 6, beginning at verse 8. Romans 6, beginning at verse 8. And this is the word of the Lord. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under the law but under grace. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. At this time, we are going to sing our morning hymn, Because He Lives. Amen. The words will be on the screen, Because He Lives.
give God a praise like you know he lives. Your Savior, not someone you don't know, but your Savior lives. Hallelujah. Every hand lifted, I want to pray for us. We can never get enough prayer. This does not lengthen the service. This is essential to the service. We have to talk to God. And on this day, let us tell our God, thank you. Thank you for the reconciliation, for the propitiation, for the redemption. And our Savior, our living Savior, the cure for us on that Friday we call good. God, we thank you. We thank you that you declared at the creation narrative, at the very beginning of the world, that you, Satan, will bruise his heel, but he will crush your head. You declared from the very beginning that Jesus will have victory over sin, over death. God, on this day, we celebrate the victory that's been secured for us by our Lord and our Savior, God with us. The condensation of the Almighty God became incarnate in flesh, dwelt among us. We remember the suffering and the pain. We remember what happened on that skull-shaped hill. But that was on Friday. We're in Sunday now. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, hallelujah, all fear is gone. Because he lives, I know who holds my future. I may not know what the future holds, but I know who holds my future. I may not know what's going to happen from one day to the next. But I need not worry and I need not fear because I know who holds my future. I may not know where uh, my next meal is coming from or how these bills are going to be paid or whether or not the doctor's diagnosis is permanent, but I know who holds my future. And so I shall live and not die. My life is worth the living because he lives. God, continue to bless this worship experience. Continue to bless us with your presence. God, continue to bless every man, woman, boy, or girl that's in this place. God, we pray now in the name of Jesus that they understand that because of Jesus' victory over death, hell, and the grave, we have victory in every area of our lives. We don't have to succumb to, amen, what plagues us. We don't have to succumb or be uh, timid or trepid about what uh, shadows over us or what uh, looms over us, but we can have confident uh, assurance that because he lives that no matter what we are facing now in the name of Jesus we have the victory in the name of Jesus Satan will have to flee in the name of Jesus my worst day won't be my last day because I know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Hallelujah. Because of what Jesus has done. Hallelujah. I'm not a victim. I am a victor. And so I give you praise on this Resurrection Sunday. I don't give you a sad victim-like praise. I give you a joyful victor praise. I, think, I stare at my situation and I declare, hallelujah, my season is changing. I'm going from mourning to dancing. Hallelujah. I'm going from victim to victor. Amen. Because I'm a child of God. 
and Jesus is my elder brother. Amen. And I'm walking in resurrection power. It's in G I wish somebody would just give God praise. Right, I need somebody right there that believes they're walking in resurrection power. I need you to give God praise right there. Give God praise right there. Hallelujah. See the stone of your situation rolling away right there. Give God some praise. That's who we are. That's who we are. That's the Savior we have. That's the God that we serve. And the Spirit of God, the Father, evident in God the Son, also lives in us as God the Holy Spirit. God, we love you and we thank you. We praise you and we magnify you. It's in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. And everybody said, hallelujah and amen. Hallelujah and amen. Hallelujah and amen. You may be seated if you're not already seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah, amen. It is Resurrection Sunday. I'm glad to see each and every one of you here today. Amen. I know you already hugged somebody, but do me a favor. You probably didn't do this. Look at somebody and say, you look good today. You look good today. You look good today. Amen. This is, as I said last Sunday, the Super Bowl of Sundays. This is, hallelujah, amen, amen. This is, amen, what we gather for, what we celebrate. This is what makes us Christian. I don't see any of my students here. They're going to fail. The, they're going to fail. They're going to fail. Because they have an assignment to go to church. Amen. And they got to write about it. And I said, if you came to my church, I'd give you extra credit. And so, uh, my college students, one of the things uh, we've been talking about uh, last week, uh, I teach a college course at Payne College entitled Essentials of the Christian Faith. And one of the things I say to them is, uh, this is the essential. Christ is at the center of what we are. You talk about being a Christian know about anybody else but you know I'm too old to be coming up with new terms and all that kind of stuff I am a Christian I am a follower of Jesus Christ I don't I know it's not in vogue to say stuff like that now everybody wants to be spiritual and all that kind of stuff and, and you know but you know if you ask me you know I I am I am a Christian as the hymn would say Lord I love to be a Christian in my heart in my heart so listen I tell my our students, this is what it means to be a Christian, to believe Jesus Christ as the Son of God, to believe that he was born of the Virgin Mary, hallelujah, suffered under Pontius Pilate, that he was crucified. And why was he crucified? For your sin and for mine. He was crucified, but he didn't stay dead. But then we believe on the third day, he got up with all power in his hand. Amen. If you're new and if it's your first time uh, here at Compassionate Life, we welcome you. We thank God for you. Those watching online, God bless you. Thank you for worshiping. Let's give our first-time visitors, our first-time guests, either in the sanctuary or watching online, a wonderful, wonderful applause. This is one of those sort of didactic teaching moments I like to do at every worship service. This is what it means for us to be Christian. This is why we celebrate. Amen. This is why we celebrate, because we believe we serve a risen Savior. And amen. That resurrection power uh, exists in each and every one of our lives to the glory of God, to the glory of God. We thank God for all that is trans uh, 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 taking place already this morning for our wonderful worship. Let's give our wonderful worship ministry a wonderful hand. Thank God for you. I thank God for our multimedia team, amen, that's managing the live, the live stream and the in-person worship. We thank God for them, doorkeepers in the house of the Lord. We thank God, amen, for Pastor Sherry that has led us already this morning. Pastor Travis, we thank God for him, amen, everybody that has helped to contribute, amen, to get the atmosphere ready for the house, for the word of God, and for the worship of 
God. Listen, at this time, I, I want to say a few things. Amen. I want to thank everybody, everybody that has been uh, tracking with us over the last few weeks. We've been doing some different things here at Compassionate Life Church. We talked about the creative power of God, and we're seeing God's creative power, amen, at work in this ministry. And so I thank you again for your flexibility to do and try some different things. You never know what you're going to get at Compassionate Life. Amen. Amen. We, we, we were changing the game up a little bit. Amen. So you may come in here. Matter of fact, on the fourth Sunday of this month, I'm going to go ahead and tell you what we're going to do. We're going to pray on the fourth Sunday of this month. We're going to take some time. Uh, we're going to take the entirety of our worship time on the fourth Sunday of this month to pray. Hallelujah. Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of preaching. No, he didn't say that. Amen. I love preaching. I do. I believe faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But Jesus said that his house will be a house of singing. Not, not singing. And, and we love to sing, don't we? We love to, I love to worship God and give God praise and all of that. But that's not what Jesus called his house. He said, my house will be a house where you bring your money. We, listen, we need your money. We need your tithe and your offering. We need all of that. All that stuff's important. But Jesus said, my house will be called a house of prayer. So on fourth Sunday of this month, and we're going to do this quite uh, frequently, we're going to gather together. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to come up with a list of things to pray about. Bring your prayer request. If you want to send it to us, you can send it to uh, the church info at thecompassionatelife.tv. Send your prayer request. And we're going to pray. We're going to pray. Uh, the old church would say stuff like it, little prayer, little power. Much prayer, much power. And I believe one of the issues and one of the reasons why we're seeing the stuff we're seeing in the culture, in the schools, is because church folk ain't praying enough. I should have got about three, four more amens when I said that. We don't pray enough in the church. No, we, 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 we love to sing and we sing. Hallelujah. We sing and we sing and we sing and we sing. But as soon as the preacher starts praying, folk get all upset, get irritated. Why are you praying so long and all that kind of stuff? No, we need to pray. We need to pray for young people. We need to pray for old people. And we need to pray for everybody in between. So come on the fourth Sunday of this month. Don't stay home. If you stay home on the fourth Sunday, I'm going to give you the side eye. I'm going to give you the stake. I'm going to be like, okay, you better have a real good excuse. Amen. All right. So fourth Sunday this month, join us. Come on the third Sunday too. Amen. <laughs> Come every Sunday. Come to church every Sunday. Amen. But definitely on the fourth Sunday, be with us as we pray. All right. Our hearts and minds are clear. It is offering time in the house of the Lord. Let's give God praise in Jesus' name as we prepare to share in the giving of his tithes and our offerings. If you need an offering envelope, lift your hand in the air and our doorkeepers, amen, our leaders will make that available to you. I'm stepping on somebody, something. That's my wife's thing, okay. Amen. You need an offering envelope, lift your hand in the air. Thank you for those who have already given this week. Amen. Many of you give way in advance, amen, of getting to the house of God. You don't wait till, amen, you get here, you give way in advance. I mean, I got my hunch is as soon as you get paid or as soon as you get the increase in your life, you turn around and you give it to God off the top. That's called first fruit giving. First fruit giving, I'll teach about this at some point. First fruit giving is important because the Bible says early on in the early books that if you give God the first, God will bless the rest. That's where that phrase, I'd rather have 90% in God than 100% without God. I can testify when you give it to God first, God will get in that money and amen, he'll make that thing stretch. This is how your grandmama and your granddaddy were able to do the stuff they were able to do because they trusted God with the first and God, that's how they sent you to school. That's how they established institutions and universities. That's how they accomplished so much because they trust, they didn't have it all that you, they didn't have the degrees you have, they didn't have the kind of income you have, but they had faith. Because they had faith, God blessed the rest. So thank, the, thank you those who give, amen, throughout the week. Amen. We want to encourage you to give the tithe unto God, the tenth, amen, a portion of your income. Make sure that that belongs to God. You don't give it to God. That belongs to God. When you don't uh, give to God what belongs to God, Malachi would say you are a thief and a robber. 
And so you don't want to be a thief nor a robber. So give what belongs to God and to God. You can also give in the bucket, in the basket rather, uh, the, the offering basket that we're going to have down front. You can also give uh, those ways on the screen, the GiveLify app, uh, Cash app, Dollar Sign Compassionate Life, GiveLify, Compassionate Life Church, the church app that you can download in your respective app store, the Compassionate Life app. You can, get, you can text the give at 706 981 8828. Let's all stand to give. Let's all stand to give. I'm going to go ahead and give you some directions first. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I need everyone to face this way. Face this way, especially the center section right here. Face this way, this wall to my right, your left. We're going to start from the last row and come down. After I pray, I'm going to pray first. Amen. Deacon Darlene, what should I do with this side over here? Okay, same, same, same direction. Amen. If you want to drop it, if you've already given, walk anyway. Walk anyway. Stretch your legs. Touch the basket and ask God for more increase in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for this awesome opportunity to give and to sow. God, we thank you for being so good to us and so benevolent and gracious and kind to us. God, I pray now as we give and sow seed into fertile soil, that you uh, we first do so knowing that we cannot beat you giving no matter how we try. And we believe the seed that leaves our hand, though it leave our hand, it shall never leave our life, but it shall return to us multiplied in the name of Jesus Christ. God, and we believe that a harvest is coming into our life. And I thank you, God, in advance for what you're going to do. Bless this offering now, we pray in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, amen and amen. Come on, let's give unto the Lord. this morning on this resurrection morning to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. Amen. You, I'm in Matthew chapter 28 and let's pull it up. I think I want us to read it from the message translation of Matthew 28. The message translation. Matthew 28 and we're going to look at verse number um, 5 through 8. Matthew 28 verses 5 through 8. You want to know how you know that you have matured in your ministry as a preacher? We have some preachers in the room. You know how you matured, amen, as a preacher, as a pastor, amen, when you realize uh, it ain't about you. Now, preachers say stuff like that, but, I mean, when you, uh, they don't often believe it. They think it's about them. And here's the truth. You know you've matured when you realize, you know what, it, it's, it's really not about me. Amen. So I don't need to be trying to impress anybody uh, and trying to come up with something new and something fresh. Amen. Amen. Uh, we realize that, you know, that Bible is good all by itself. That word is good all by itself. It doesn't need me to do anything. I don't have to add to it and I don't have to take away from it. Amen. Amen. Just preach Bible. Just preach the word of God. And so... For, for, for some years now, I have, uh, thank God, gotten over the temptation 
or the pressure to try and sound Charles fresh and revelatory. Amen. Amen. I don't need to sound like I created, I found something new in the Bible, nothing like that. I know that if I just preach the word of God, amen, that God would do the rest. And it used to be when I first started preaching, uh, yeah, I would, I, especially around Easter, I knew we were having a bigger crowd normally on Easter. I would try to be real fresh and, you know, have some great insight. Uh, but you know what now? Easter is like about the easiest sermon I got to preach all year long. Because all I got to do, tell the story. And as my dad told me the other day, it's a good story. And it's an old story. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 28, verses 5 through 8. I do want to acknowledge my parents who are here. Reverend Nawana Miller, Deacon George Miller, we thank God for them. Let's give God praise. Mama and daddy, daddy and mama are here. It's always good for them to be in Augusta with us. We stay up till 1 o'clock in the morning watching old TV shows and talking. Amen. But I'm glad they're here. Matthew 28, verses 5 through 8 from the message. Uh, the words will be on the screen. And this is the word of God. The angel spoke to the woman. There is nothing to fear here. I know you're looking for Jesus, the only, the one they nailed to the cross. He is not here. He is raised, just as he said. Come and look at the place where he was placed. Verse 7, now get on your way quickly and tell his disciples he is risen from the dead. He is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Catch this. That's the message. The women, deep and full of wonder, full of joy, lost no time in leaving the tomb. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon me. Send God now an anointing that makes preaching easy and hearing the word of sweet delight. Help me now, God, to be true to thy text and do thy word nor thy people no harm. God, we pray that as we tell the story, God, that you will touch, heal, save, and deliver. Lift up the downtrodden. Edify those who want to be built up on today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. Verse 7 says again, now get on your way quickly and tell his disciples. He is risen from the dead. He is going ahead of you. You will see him there. That's the message. Dear friends, for a few moments, I want to talk from that thought. This is the message. This is the message. Three days have now passed since that fateful day when they nailed Jesus to that cross beam. What an uncertain time those subsequent days must have been for those that loved Jesus and followed Jesus. For three years, the disciples of Jesus, a number far bigger than just the 12, had their, devoted their entire lives to Jesus. For three years, these people have followed Jesus. They have walked with Jesus. They have put their all in Jesus. But now they find themselves in a weird and uncertain time. Things have gone quickly from good to bad. Just a few days prior, shouts of Hosanna rang through the streets and corridors of Jerusalem as Jesus made his triumphant entry. All the while, there was underfoot a demonic plot as the devil seizes the spirit of a man named Judas who had been hanging with Jesus all the time. He, the devil, seizes upon the spirit of Judas and compels him to betray the only begotten of the Father for only 30 pieces of silver. It would be on that Monday, Thursday, after that Passover meal in that upper room that after Judas having the nerve to dip his bread in the same cup as Jesus, I tell you, sometimes you got to watch your friends as well as your enemies. 
uh, Judas after having dipped his bread in the same cup as Jesus, all the while knowing that he would sell Jesus out. After all of that, after, dear friends, the prayer in the garden where the Bible says that Jesus prays so hard that God would let this cup of suffering pass from him. Amen. He prays so hard in that garden. He prays with such passion and fervor that the Bible says he sweats drops of blood. After all of that, after he's betrayed, after he is denied by Peter, after he is marched, as the old preacher would say, from judgment hall to judgment hall, after he is mocked and tortured, after he was crucified on that Friday we call good, and he entrusts his spirit into the hands of God, after the earth shakes and rocks to and fro like a staggering drunken man, and after the veil of the temple was rent or torn in two, allowing us to go into the very presence of God, after all these things, Friday night looks like a defeat. And for three days, they are left to wonder what would happen to them now that Jesus is gone. Hey, but glory be to God that Friday wasn't the end of the story because a few days later, brothers and sisters, at the dawning of the third day, the Bible says something interesting happens in Matthew chapter 28. The Bible says that two women named Mary go to the borrowed tomb where Jesus was placed and the Bible says that when they come to the tomb that there was a sudden earthquake sudden trembling shaking of the earth and the Bible says that an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the store the stone from the door and that the angel who had descended sat upon it Verse 3 says, his countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. Verse 4, the guards shook with fear because of him and they became like dead men. The Bible lets us know, amen, that it's here that the angel, this descending angel speaks to them and he gives them the very first resurrection message. That's right. We see the very first Easter or resurrection message, amen, right there in Matthew chapter 28, verse number 7. Dear friends, it's really the only message that needs to be preached on resurrection morning. Here it is, that Jesus is not dead, but Jesus is, Jack, alive. It's here. The angel says, that is the message that I want you to share, that Jesus is not dead, but Jesus is alive. That is what God wants you to say. That is your encouraging word to everybody you meet. That is the message you are to share. Amen. That Jesus is not dead, but Jesus is alive. It's an interesting message. It's a, a provocative message. You might miss some of the edifying points of this message if you read it too fast. So let's slow down and let's look at the message real quick. Amen. Amen. First, I believe that this message by the angel is first and foremost uh, a message against trepidation. Uh, it is. It is. It is. The, the Bible says that, uh, that while coming to the tomb, there was this violent shaking of the earth and seeing an angel arrayed in white and with a countenance like lightning he descended from heaven and it's here that we hear the first words out of the angel's mouth and those words that come from the angel's mouth are do not be afraid that's right. This is, dear friends, part of the first message, amen, the first resurrection message from this angel to these two women. In verse number five, he tells these two women, do not be afraid. And this is powerful to me because of all the things, amen, Reverend Mickey, he could have said to these women, of all the things this angel could have said to these women who have come to the tomb where Jesus was, the first words he says to them is right there in verse 5. He says to them, do not be afraid. Now, 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 Deke, perhaps uh, many in the room cannot appreciate how truly frightening this situation actually was for the women. I mean, let's just think about it. Let's pause. Let's use our sanctified imaginations, Pastor Charles. Let's use our sanctified imaginations for a moment. You have here a frightening situation. Remember where they are. They are in a graveyard. They are in a cemetery. Early 
in the morning. The sun was just barely beginning to really peak over the horizon. Darkness still lingered over the sky. These women are still distraught and devastated, hallelujah, by what they had seen and observed and experienced and witnessed their beloved Jesus endure just a few days ago. Further, uh, they, 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 the one they looked to Jesus, the one they looked to for hope and for guidance and for comfort was no longer there with them. This was an unsure and fretful situation it appeared to everyone like the evil one had gotten the victory and then in the midst of this fretful situation we also see this frightening manifestation because as I've just stated standing in front of them is an angel whose presence the Bible says can I tell the story today this angel whose presence the Bible says shone so brilliantly that the Bible says it was like lightning. The Bible then goes on to say that this angel rolls this heavy stone that sat in front of the tomb. He rolls the stone away. This was a frightening manifestation, hallelujah, in the middle of a fretful situation. I mean, can you imagine if, if it were you, amen, and if you were in this story, put yourself, dear friends, in the shoes of these two women. Imagine for a moment you were walking through a cemetery. And it's dark outside. And out of the blue, in the cemetery, there's an earthquake. One of the tombs <laughs> just opens up. I know you're saved. I know you're holy. I know you're sanctified. I know you want your neighbor to believe, amen, that you would not have been afraid. But come on, let's tell the truth and shame the devil. You be terrified. We wouldn't, most of us don't even like going to funerals. Wouldn't be caught dead in the cemetery, let alone at night. Amen, 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 amen. They were in a cemetery. They were, there was something that was not quite right. It was a fretful situation within a frightening manifestation. But in the middle of a fretful situation and a frightening manifestation, the angel gives to them a motivating inspiration. Because even in the midst of all of that, the angel tells them these words, do not be afraid. I know the situation you find yourself in is contextually and existentially. I know it looks frightening and overwhelming, but no matter how it looks and no matter what you see in front of you, do not be afraid. The first words of the resurrection, dear friends, for the people of God are words of encouragement. Here it is. He says to them, I know you're afraid, but regardless of what you see and regardless of what you face and regardless of where you are, there's no reason for you to be afraid. And I don't know about you, but that's good news from heaven's press on today because the truth of the matter is in this life, there's a whole lot of stuff we will have to face that will look frightening to us come on be honest with me on today uh, all of us at times in our life will come upon situations we can't handle issues we can't resolve illnesses with no cure hardships with no help and can't want nobody help us hardships with no depression with no joy bills you can't pay come on you name it all of us will experience and find ourselves in uncertain and difficult times all of us at various times of our lives will find ourselves in frightening situations but the words of the angel ring down through the annals and corridors of time to encourage all of us that regardless of whatever frightening situation we face in life, the angel says to the two women, and believe it or not, the angel says to us, do not be afraid. Okay, I know I told you all a few weeks ago uh, that if you were to look throughout the Bible, uh, you will discover that this phrase, do not fear or do not be afraid, or why fear, uh, or some variation of that phrase, occurs more than 365 times in the Bible, which means for every day of the year and for every experience you have in life, you have an encouragement from God that you don't have to be afraid. 
Uh, I know it's tough, brothers and sisters, but don't be afraid. I know it's challenging, but don't be afraid. I know it's difficult, but don't be afraid. I know it's scary and overwhelming, and I know you're facing something right now that looks uncertain, but God told me to tell you this resurrection word for you today is don't be afraid. Do me a favor. Look at a neighbor, if you don't mind, and tell your neighbor, don't be afraid. The text tells us we should not be afraid. Why? He says, because we know Jesus and we love Jesus. But notice, I, I'm just getting started. Notice what the Bible says. The Bible says to the two women, the angel says, do not be afraid. But the, the two men that were there, the angel did not speak. Did you notice that? There were some guards stationed there at the tomb. And the angel, when he descends, he says to the two women, don't be afraid. But to the two guards that were placed at the tomb of Jesus, uh, the Bible says they were so afraid that they became like dead men. So you have two women, amen, who are G'd up there in the garden, in the tomb. They're not afraid. The angel speaks to them, but the guards placed at the tomb were so afraid, the Bible says they became like dead men. Here's what that says to me, Pastor Sherry. That says to me that when you know Jesus and when you love Jesus, that Jesus, God, will encourage you in frightening times. You see, let me help you. When you don't know Jesus and when you don't have faith in Jesus, when you come upon frightening situations, if you don't know Jesus, amen, and you don't have faith in Jesus, then you have a reason to be afraid. Amen. But when you know Jesus and when you have faith in Jesus, you don't have a reason to be afraid. Okay, let me say it this way. Uh, uh, it's good to know Jesus. Uh, here's why it's good to know Jesus. Because when you find yourself in frightening situations, amen, you know that because I know Jesus and because I have faith in Jesus, God's going to make sure everything comes out all right. I, I feel like preaching now. Is there anybody in the room today that's glad that they know Jesus? Is there anybody in the room today that's glad that they have faith in Jesus? Because when you know Jesus, preach George Miller, and when you have faith in Jesus, uh, you don't have to be afraid. That's the first part of the resurrection message. I got a little while to go. That's the first part of the resurrection message contained in that message is an encouragement against trepidation. But there, there's more in the message. Look at it. Look at it. Don't close your Bibles. Look at it. It's right there. There's more in the message. Amen. Because contained within the message beyond this encouragement against trepidation, we also have, hallelujah. I hope you brought your shouting shoes today. Here it is. We also have evidence of triumph. It's there, look again at it. Uh, what, what did the angel say? Uh, verse 5, but the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know you seek Jesus who was crucified. Verse 6, here it is. He is not here. He is risen as he said he would. <laughs> I told you a few minutes ago that the Bible will preach all by itself, won't it? Can I read that again? Amen. Verse 6, he is not here, for he is risen just as he said he would. Come see the place where the Lord lay. Dear friends, uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse number 6, is one of, if not the most important verse in all the Bible, because you've got to understand today that the whole of Scripture, as I just told you, points to Jesus. From the Old Testament, throughout the new, all of it points to Jesus. Amen. You have all these different writers from all these different times, but there is this divine thread, this divine messianic thread woven throughout the scriptures. All of creation, all of the Bible points to Jesus, and it was the anointed purpose of Jesus Christ to be the atoning sacrifice for all of our sins. Amen, amen. Like I just said, that Christ is at Christ and the cross at Calvary is at the center of creation. 
because it's at the cross, <laughs> at the cross, at the cross, it's at the cross where Jesus took my sin, took your sin. He paid the penalty for all of our sins. He paid the penalty with his blood. And what makes the resurrection of Jesus so important is that the resurrection was a vindication. Vindication, the resurrection is proof, amen, that Jesus was exactly who he said he was. That he was indeed the son of God. The, the resurrection, dear friends, is the ultimate apologetic. It, it, it is the definitive evidence that Jesus was who he said he was. I, I like how theologian George Ladd put it. George Ladd says it this way. Uh, he says that if Christ is not risen from the dead, then the long course of God's redemptive acts to save his people end in the tomb. And if the resurrection of Christ is not a reality, then we have no assurance that God is the living God. For then death would have the last word, making our faith futile because the object of that faith has not vindicated himself as the Lord of life. Christian faith is incarcerated in the tomb. But if Jesus Christ is raised from the dead. That ain't lad. That's Miller right there. If Jesus Christ is raised from the dead, I mean, then it's proof that he is who he said he was. That he is God in the flesh. He is Emmanuel. That he is sovereign over all things, even death, hell, and the grave. Because if Christ was able to raise himself from the dead, then that means that he must be more than just a man. It means that he is in fact the son of the living God. And that he's not just a prophet, that he is the son of God. That he's not just some sort of, amen, amen, erudite philosopher, but he is the son of God. That he's not just some goodwill doer, but he is the son of God. That he's not just the symbol of our faith, but he is God in the flesh. And he is the son of God. And brothers and sisters, understands that since that day, since that day, Amen. Since the day that Jesus Christ was conceived by the Holy Spirit, there's always been some speculation about just who Jesus was. Uh, down through the years, they've been trying to figure out just who Jesus is. Who is Jesus? There has been debate about who Jesus is. In fact, Jesus himself understood the speculation about his identity when he asked his disciples, who do men, people say, that I am. The answers back then were varied just as the answers are varied on today. Some say Elijah. Some say Jeremiah. John the Baptist or one of the prophets. Then Jesus asked a more pressing question. Who do you say that I, let me ask somebody in the house, who do you say that I am? And the Bible says it was Peter who gave the right answer. There were some pretty bad answers that had already gone out, but Peter gave the right answer. It was Peter who said, I know who you are. Is there anybody in the house that knows who Jesus is? And Peter says, I know who you are. And thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Uh, Jesus was always affirming who he was. In John chapter 14, verse 9 and 10, Jesus said, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? Jesus, brothers and sisters, was always affirming who he was. But even then, there were still skeptics. But, dear friends, an empty grave Amen. And the resurrection of Jesus was the definitive proof of just who Jesus said he was. Uh, look at somebody and say, the grave is empty. Uh, yeah, it's, it's proof that Jesus is who he says he is. Amen. Because when you go to the grave of Jesus, uh, there was nobody there. The grave is empty. It's definitive proof that he is the son of God. And I don't know, is there anybody in here that's glad that the tomb is empty because it's validation that Jesus Christ is the son of God. It's evidence of a triumph. Uh, it's validation of the resurrection message. It's proof that Jesus was 
who he says he was. So here's the message. First and foremost, it's an encouragement against trepidation, but it's also evidence against the triumph, evidence of triumph. But here's the last one, and I'm going to take my seat and let you get to your Easter ham. Here it is. The last one that we see in the message, this last observation, is the emotion of the two. I'm in Bible country because, let's look at the text one more time, because he shows them the empty tomb. The tomb is empty. The angel shows them this empty tomb. I hope your Bibles aren't closed. The angel shows them an empty tomb. And then in verse number seven, the angel says to them, now get on your way quickly. Go and tell his disciples. He is risen from the dead. He is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. That's the message. The Bible says, here it is, they left after hearing the angel's message to go tell the disciples what they have seen. Here it is, they've been encouraged. They've seen the evidence. They've been instructed. And the Bible says they go quickly to tell what they've heard and what they've seen. If I had time this morning, I would tell you that's evangelism 101 right there in the text. Amen. When you've seen what God can do and when you've experienced what God is able to do, you ought to go and tell somebody what God, this ain't even in my script, but I'm going to go ahead and preach this part right here. You go and tell somebody what God has done in your life. Amen. You want to know how we can fill this room up? When you experience what God has done in your life, uh, don't keep it to yourself. The old church would say, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I couldn't keep it to myself. Go and tell somebody, I was sick, but God healed me. Amen. I was depressed, but God lifted me up. I didn't know how I was going to pay all my bills, but a cattle on a thousand hills belonged to him. And somehow, some kind of way, just at the nick of time, God stepped into my situation and he worked everything out. If you learn to tell what God has done for you, amen, hallelujah, that's evangelism one-on-one. Amen, but that's not in my script. The Bible says that they go quickly to tell. And verse 8 then grabs my attention because it's in verse number 8 that you'll read, if you're not careful, you'll read over it if you don't slow down. It's in verse number 8, hallelujah, that the Bible says that the women, deep in wonder and full of joy, lost no time in leaving the tomb. Okay, okay, y'all don't really know when to shout. Let me, let me try it again. Verse Eight, the Bible says, amen, after seeing what they've seen, that the women, deep in wonder and full of joy, lost no time in leaving the tomb. All right, you still don't get it. Let me try it this way. Here it is. They came crying in verse number one, but they left differently going out than they did when they came in. The Bible says, even though they came in crying, the Bible says the women left deep in wonder and full of joy. Okay, I know why you can't feel that because you don't know what it means to be deep in wonder. Or, or fear as some translations say. Well, well, that word in the original language means to be in awe. It, it means to be uh, 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 in reverence. It means, I like this one, it means uh, to be in amazement. Uh, uh, they left that situation in amazement. They were amazed at what they've seen and what they've heard. And, and, and not in a perplexed kind of way. No, 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 no. Not, not amazed in a perplexed kind of way, but they were amazed, hallelujah, in a reverential kind of way. It, it, it's, it's in a way uh, that will make one say, wow, that was amazing. Uh, I don't know about you today, but when I think, we're about to have a good time now. Uh, when I think of everything that Jesus has done for me, uh, there are a lot of things I could say about everything that God has done for me. But one of those adjectives would definitely be God is amazing. When I think 
of my almost 44 years and all I've experienced, when I think about God's love for me, I have to declare God is truly amazing. When I think of all the demonstrations of the Lord's power I've experienced down through the years, I have to declare that God is amazing. I wonder, is there anybody else you're a little older than 44 or a little younger than 44, but you can declare when you replay the DVD of your life, you have to declare after everything you've seen God do for you in your life, you have to declare that God is amazing. Let's pull off and let's get on out of here. When I think about what he did on Friday, I can't help but say that God is amazing. When I think about the fact that he was not guilty and the pain that he went through, I can't help but say God is amazing. When I think about what he endured, I can't help but say that God is amazing. When I think about the nails in his hands and the nails in his feet, I can't help but say God, Jesus is amazing. When I think about the crown of thorns that were placed on his head and the spear in his side, come on, this is what you came for on Easter. I can't help but say that's amazing. When I think about the fact that he forgave those that hurt him because if it had been some of us we couldn't forgive anybody but when I think about the fact that he forgave those that hurt him I have to say Jesus is amazing when I think about that thief on the other side the thief on the right side look at somebody and say get on the right side when I think about the thief on the right side who Jesus forgave huh, on a buzzer beater huh, just in the nick of time huh, I can't help but say that's amazing huh, when I think about the fact huh, that he could have come down at any time huh, but he stayed there all night long huh, and endured the pain huh, when I think about the fact huh, that that should have been me huh, hanging on the cross huh, it should have been me huh, held the heel. It should have been me taking the lashes. Huh, it should have been me huh, going through the pain. Huh, it should have been me. Huh, but thank God it wasn't me. Huh, it was Jesus, huh, Mary's baby. Huh, Jesus, huh, uh, the spotless lamb. Huh, Jesus, uh, that hang there on the cross. Huh, I can't help but say, huh, he is amazing when I think about the fact that he gave up his life and that Jesus died. Amen. He died. The old preacher would say, didn't he die? Didn't he die? He died to the sky, swallowed the sun. He died to the moon, dripped in blood. He died until heaven could not stand to watch it any longer so it pulled the shade down he died until the veil was torn in two and the graves busted wide open he died until the birds stopped singing till the bees stopped buzzing till the fish stopped swimming he died till the earth reeled and rocked like a drunken man he died till the gambling soldier saw the light he died till hell got happy and heaven got sad he died until time kissed itself he died here it is till mercy and grace got together in the great redemption story he died till the dead dressed themselves and walked the streets and they shouted he died he died and even the soldiers said surely he was the son of god he died and the father turned his back on him to look at him huh? because when he saw Jesus huh? all he saw was our sins huh? he saw my sin huh? he saw your sin huh? he saw your sin huh? and he saw yours too huh? he saw your sin huh? and he saw what you would do
do. So Jesus died all alone. He dropped his head in the locks of his shoulders and he dismissed his spirit from his earthly body and he put his spirit in the hands of God. He died. Didn't he die? He died until he decided he didn't want to stay dead any longer because he died on Friday. But the book says that early Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands with the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And when I think about the fact that he died, but on the third day, he got up again. I can't help but declare, Jesus is amazing. Is there anybody in the house that can declare on today that Jesus is amazing? So the Bible says, I got to leave you. May the Lord bless you real good. God bless you on this Resurrection Sunday. The Bible says when they had seen it all and when they had experienced it all, the Bible says that the women, even though they came in sad, they left with joy because of what they've seen and what they've heard. Is there anybody in compassionate life on today that can testify? I've seen too much and I've heard too much and I've experienced too much and I can't help but to give God praise like the women because I've got joy down in my soul joy the world didn't give joy the world can't take away I got joy because my Jesus got the victory. Can I get somebody, anybody, everybody to give God praise like it got shown? Yeah. So. lives on. Revelation Jesus crucified for your sin for mine. Wages of sin death that's what had to happen. Sin idea of sin let me geek out for a moment the idea of sin idea of missing the mark idea wretched idea of here's one connotation a top idea of deviation from the norm Jesus becomes the standard God is a holy standard God was in fellowship with man in the garden the Bible says but because of sin sin is always the culprit one of the reasons why we're struggling and we're struggling now we stop, we stop talking about sin. We stop talking about sin. Now I'm just talking about sin. I'm not talking about individual sin. See, that's the problem. We want to pick and choose what sin we're talking about. Sin is sin. I don't care what you're doing. If you leave out of here and you talk about what somebody had on, then you sin it. Sin was the culprit. Because of sin, there was this brokenness. There was this distance created between humankind and God. And so, the system was put in place where in order to uh, be forgiven of sin, there had to be the shedding of blood. So you, you had folk with lambs, 
goats, if you had money, if you had bank, you would bring the lamb, the goat, go a sliding scale. Amen. If you had no money, you would bring some pictures or something like that. Sacrifice that are supposed to be the penalty for your sin. Here's the problem. As soon as the goat, the lamb was slain, <laughs> if you didn't leave the temple good, you'd have already sinned again. There weren't enough lambs, goats, pigeons, doves in the world to cleanse and pay the penalty for our sins. God knew this. God, as the Bible says, wrapped him the incarnation. God wraps himself in flesh. Travels down the generational highway, 40 and 2. Lands in the womb of a virgin girl. It's a virgin girl she's conceived of the Holy Spirit it's an immaculate conception born in a barn in Bethlehem the old preacher would say he's the only one born to die that was his purpose that was his, that was his purpose in coming he dies for us and he becomes here's a, here's a, a, a I paid $50,000 to learn this word I'm going to give it to you for free here it is propitiation for our sins he becomes the substitute here it is he takes your place on the cross you should have been the sacrifice but he becomes the sacrifice he became the sacrifice but if he had stayed dead hallelujah and hallelujah it would have it would have it would have suggested that he wasn't who he said he was. But because he was victorious, not just over sin, but victorious over death, it reminds us that we're not just saved, but we're more than saved. We're victors in every area of our lives. And that's the message. See, what happens is we, we turn church into all kind of other stuff. And we stop preaching stuff like this. And so we begin to believe that our circumstances and our situations, that is permanent. That we do not have power over that which we believe has power over us. And so you get some bad news when you go through a bad experience. And all, all of us go through them. Is there anybody in the house that has not been through a bad experience? Everybody, I need everyone that's been through a bad experience in their life. You had some, there's somebody right now going through some difficult times and difficult situations. And you need to know today that just as Jesus was victorious over death, hell, and the grave, that same resurrection power exists in every single one of us. Here it is, who call ourselves believers in Jesus Christ. So the grave where you are is not where you have to stay. The stone, I believe, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Thank you. The stone is rolling away. Light is now peeking in through that dark situation. And I believe in the name of Jesus, I believe, amen, you've been laying down for too long. You've been bound for too long. Here's the truth. Some of y'all been with me for a long time now. I only got about three or four Easter sermons. So if you roll with me for any length of time, you're going to hear these sermons again. I got another sermon called Leaving the Linen Behind. That's probably next year's Easter sermon. Okay? I'll preach that next year. You've been wrapped up too long. You've been tied up too long. You've been in that dark, depressing, deadly place for too long. But you have resurrection power. Amen. And the winding sheets are beginning to unwind. And they're beginning to fall at your feet. Pick those things up, fold them up, put them right there on the bench. Amen. The stone is rolling away. Light is shining in your situation. Amen. And you're no longer a victim, but you're a victor because resurrection power exists each and every one of us. If you believe that, give God praise on today. That is the message. That's the message that God has for us. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's give God praise in Jesus' name. Wow. I'm past time, way past time, but it's, it's Resurrection Sunday. Everyone stand if you're not already standing. I want to pray for us. 
God, we thank you for this word on today. Thy word is a lamp unto our feet and it's a light unto our path. God, you're so good. God, you're so great. You're so awesome. God, if, I, if, I, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know where I would be right now. God, today, today, every day, God, but today, especially on today, God, I'm glad that I'm saved. I'm glad that I'm saved. I'm glad that I know Jesus. God, I thank you. From this time last year to this year, God, wow, you've been so awesome. You've been so good. You've been so kind. God, you've been so faithful, God. Even in my darkest moments, in our darkest moments, God, I felt your presence right there with us. God, I, I've had questions of you. God, no doubt, as those disciples who were trying to figure out what had just happened, as those two women approached the tomb, eyes red from tears. But God, some, there was something deep down in my spirit that just knew, just knew that this is not the end of the story. It's not the end of the story. God, and my prayer is this, that what, what I've come to know and what I've come to experience, what we've come to know and what we've come to experience, God, I pray someone under the sound of my voice will hear the message of the angel that believers have victory over their circumstances. God, I pray today that they leave here just as those two women left, encouraged and lifted, buoyed, by the Bible and the words contained therein. God, I pray in the name of Jesus now that they will hear, amen, this word, amen, that the words of the scripture would jump from the pages of the Holy Writ and that it will uh, uh, land in their lives and in their situations and they too will come to understand, amen, they don't have to stay in the tomb, but that they can be lifted up, that their situation can turn around and that God all they have to do is confess and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. God, that they, that that's, the, that's the message. That all they have to do is walk with you and talk with you. That they will, as the old church would do, hold to your unchanging hand. That no matter how dark it looks, no matter how final it feels, God, I pray that they know that they know that Friday happened. It was painful. It was difficult. It was frightening. And it hurt. But that was just on Friday. Because Sunday is coming. And as bad as things were, things are about to get a whole lot better. That as final as it looked, it was just a comma. It certainly was not a period. Hallelujah. Because things are about to get a whole lot better. God, I prophesy in the name of Jesus that situations are turning around right now in the name of Jesus. God, thank you for the joy that we feel at this moment right now. Thank you for the joy, amen, that you returned to our lives. God, for 12 months, I've prayed, restore unto me the joy. And God, you've done just that. And I pray in the name of Jesus now that that joy will be restored unto your sons and your daughters. God, there's someone who needs to be saved. I pray they get saved. There's someone who needs to rededicate their life. I pray they rededicate their life. God, there's someone who needs to join the church. I pray they'll join the church. The body of Christ. Christians belong in church. Christians belong in church. Christians should be a part of a church. Christians belong in church and should be a part of the church. Christians should be a part of the body of Christ. Christians, amen, should be a part of the body and be used by the head. Hallelujah. Christians belong in the body and Christians belong in church. I pray that they give their life, be dedicate their life and join the church. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Come on, repeat after me. God, we come in Jesus' name, confessing we're sinners in need of a Savior. You said in your word, if we confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. So God, we make confession of our faith in the risen Savior 
and we freely receive the gift of salvation and we declare that our lives will never be the same in Jesus name amen and amen listen if you prayed that prayer for the first time in your life here in the sanctuary or even watching online you ma'am sir my brother my sister have been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ if you're let's give God praise for the salvation that's taking place today and if not today maybe this word will be replayed tomorrow or the next day or the next day or the next week or the next month and we give God praise for the salvation that will even take place then. However God chooses to move, we celebrate what God is doing in the midst of us. So if you've given your life to the Lord for the first time on today, amen, we celebrate you in Jesus' name. If you want to rededicate your life, we want to encourage you to renew, refresh, restart. Resurrection Sunday is a good day to renew your relationship with the Lord. All jokes aside, Resurrection Sunday is the perfect day to renew and re-energize and refresh your relationship with the Lord. If you're going to be honest and admit, you know what? I walked with the Lord. I did. But the issues of life, the circumstances of life, temptations of life got the best of me. It did. It got the best of me. Before I knew it, I was I was distant from God. I was, I was distant from Jesus. I wasn't living the way I should be living. I wasn't walking in the way I know to walk. I know who Jesus is, but somehow, some way, there's distance now. Perhaps there was a situation, amen, that just knocked you on your off your feet, just knocked you over, and you had questions of God, and you wonder where was God when you were going through all of that. That happens. That happens that happens. But you know what I've learned about God? God is big enough to handle your questions. He is. And he may not give you a quick answer. But you know what I'm discovering? We'll understand it better by and by. So all you got to do today is take a step back toward Jesus. You take one step. This ain't Bible, but it's great theology. If you take one step, he'll take two. He'll come to you need to rededicate your life. Come on, rededicate your life today. Renew, refresh, re-energize your relationship with the Lord. You need to join the church. If you need a place to call home, a people to call family. Like I've said it. Church folk need to be in church. Let's give God praise for my sister that's coming. Come on. God bless you, my sister. Come on. Come on. Christians need to be in church. Come on. Come on. Come stand with her. Come stand with her. Christian, that's right, that's right. Keep giving God. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. We celebrate what the Lord is doing. We celebrate what the Lord is doing. Hey, y'all. You know what? The stream is, just went off. I had it scheduled for 1 o'clock, and it's 1 o'clock. So we, we, we don't normally go this long. We're normally out of here 30 minutes ago, but it's Easter Sunday. All right? So, Lord's turn. You know, the devil is slick enemy is slick you can sit down if you need to the enemy is slick because the enemy will have us believe in stuff that's just not true you have us believing that you don't need the church that you don't need a pastor that you don't need to hear the word of God you know in my darkest moments you know what the problem with me was we talked about this I found myself listening to everything else. So I'd be sitting in the house and I'd be watching First Take and Undisputed, listening to Skip and Shannon talk. I'd, I'd be in the car and because I was angry at the Lord, I would I would play old 90s rap, hip hop, and had there was, there was no Jesus in any of that. I mean, ain't no ain't no Jesus in Dr. Dre's The Chronic. It just ain't in there. Ain't in there. I was listening to all kind of other stuff. And that feeds your spirit. And before you know it, you start spiraling to a place that you don't need to be. Ain't no, and, I, and I've taught on this a thousand times, but sometimes you just get so arrogant that you don't follow your own teaching. What you know to be true. Ain't you know what I've rediscovered? Hey, Christian folk need to be around other Christian folk. Christian folk need to hear the word of God. 
Christian folk need to listen to gospel music. 